I've been experiencing something of a career pivot lately. It's interesting. I feel like I've spent the last 10 or 20 years really focused on, you know, hardcore media theory, economic theory, and articulating why it's really okay for us to move away from traditional corporate venture capitalism and towards a more real-time distributed form of economics, a a peer-to-peer marketplace, and why that will actually work. In other words, why it's not just some crazy hippie commune dream, but why shifting economic gears and moving towards a system where we promote the velocity of currency rather than the accumulation of capital, we end up with a better economy, not a weaker economy, one that's better for everyone involved, even the wealthy, even the corporations, because they're sitting on so much fat, they're sitting on so much cash, it actually hurts them. If they were leaner, they'd be happier. But I've gotten to a place now where I see my best ideas are now all over the place. I mean, it's sometimes credited, sometimes not. I'm not bummed out about where I'm not getting credit. But when I see, oh, look at that paragraph from from this book is now in the New York Times or is now in this other person's book or is now being talked about even at some TED conference or someplace where I wouldn't go. It's like, wow, I guess I've, I've done that job. The, the best of the most rigorous ideas I've had have been accepted. They're in there. They're trickling down now. They're moving through society. The experts get it, and the movements get it. People are out there between platform cooperativism and Lumio and all the many bottom-up democracy movements and media movements and education movements. I feel like the, the rigorous work, at least my rigorous work, has gotten traction. But when I look at what's next, what really needs to happen, is I feel like the culture at large now needs to become more receptive to these kinds of ideas. That as a culture, we're still so afraid, we're still so addicted to our own, our individual or our family's short-term survival and health. We're still looking at the future in these outrageously negative, fear-based ways. It's still easier for most people to imagine how to survive the zombie apocalypse than how to survive the actual next five or ten years. And people still feel so divorced from the processes through which they can make change. They still see uh, democracy, economics, technology, spirituality as non-participatory affairs, as venues, as areas of our social development that are not open to re-engineering, that are not open for discussion, that now I'm thinking that the most important work that I can do with whatever remaining time I have on this on this little globe um, is cultural. I'm getting attracted to uh, to theater, to fiction, to comics, to TV, uh, to places where we can uh, kind of break apart the cultural narrative that we've been using, the cultural narratives that are so obsolete in an era where rapid and uh, really heartfelt cultural change are called for, that what I want to start doing, um, particularly as soon as I'm done with this next, just one more book, um, this next book is I want to start getting involved again in theater, in listening, in fiction, in cultural narrative, and I know that's a big expression, but in the way that we are putting together ideas, the way that we're understanding the world, the way that we're understanding the role of the individual and the negotiation of our individual freedom with our 
our collective coordination and with orchestrating this this consensual hallucination that we're calling reality um, I feel like it's time to get in there to get into consciousness to get into perception to get into the way that we're regarding reality around us in order to really help instill uh, myself and others with the will and the confidence and the kind of the daring, fun-loving, mischievous, open-mindedness that we really need to approach this next potentially challenging moment in uh, human civilization.